What's up everybody, George back here again. We're working on our Project Daytona. So in between the last video and this video, I did get the engine wiring harness installed. I also went ahead and got the three bar map sensor plugged in. It's over on the passenger side firewall furthest from the camera. And I did a little bit more mock up. I've got a game plan for the exhaust. So that will be coming in hopefully the next video. But today we're going to work on the cooling system. The To do the radiator mock-up, right now I've got the alternator hanging in the way. And to do the alternator, I need to have the water pump back in place. Which also is helpful because I'm going to need the water outlet there to figure out my radiator hoses later. So the first step is going to be to put on the water pump housing that I took off before. I did get a new O-ring for that finally, so I'm going to do that. The next thing is to put on the alternator brackets. And there's everything back together. So now we can start on the radiator mock-up after I do one more thing, and that's putting the water neck into place. Now that the water neck's on, and that's just temporary, so I can get the hoses mocked up, I want to clean that up, and I'm going to go ahead and put a new thermostat in while I've got everything apart too, even though I'm pretty sure the one that's in there is fine, I mean, might as well replace it, and they're like 2 or $3, I'll just, just order one. One thing to note, that top bolt on the alternator, so this one here, there's... A bunch of different spacers and pieces that go in that so like in between like the alternator is got a hollow space in the middle and there's like a spacer that goes in there then there's like those there's a rubber bushing on each side that go through the bracket and all that stuff has to be in place for the alternator to sit right if you're missing one of those pieces when you tighten everything down the alternator is gonna sit cockeyed and when it sits cockeyed you're going to end up with a belt alignment issue and it's going to chunk belts. So I'm going to get the radiator and we're going to start mocking that up now. Okay, so I've got a Civic radi aluminum radiator designed for a Civic. It's not out of a Civic. Off eBay. And I've already done a little bit of mock-up. I figured out that it will clear everything and I would like it to go right in there like that. I made a mark here to line up with that peg. So what I'm going to do is kind of get this cinched into place with something. I may run some zip ties around here and do something really funky with that. Just to get this where it will stay in place. So I can start finding some hoses that fit on that. I'm hoping that I can take some hoses I already have and just modify them to fit where I want it. This will clear the hood. I was worried about that. But this is the part that sticks up the highest. And I was able to get the hood to shut. I mean, it doesn't look like I left any marks. I took the hood insulation down. But I'm going to go ahead and get this cinched down so I can start working on the hoses. Okay, so I was able to take the factory bottom radiator hose. This is the upper. These are all pieces of the bottom, and I've trimmed little bits out. So it's a little bit shorter. But, I mean, it basically wormed its way across the car like that. So this section has got just almost a perfect bend to fit in here. Like I can make this work perfect if I move the radiator slightly, but I don't want to move it that far to the driver's side. As it sits, it will work. Add it in there somehow, there you go. But I don't know if I can clamp that and have it hold or if it would start seeping around where I tried to clamp it down over this smaller neck. This is the part that went on the water neck down here. This is another section of that hose. It's also too large to fit on these. But if I put this on here and then put this on the water neck, it gets me really close to almost where like just a 90 between those two sections would get it done. But again, I don't know if I can clamp that down enough to seal properly around the smaller size. 
So that being said, this is the right size hose. This part of it is. And I've got almost the same angle right here. So I may cut this out and try to use it on the radiator side. I also may look for another option using some hose that I can buy that will just snake in there, do what I need to do and be done with it. And basically kind of what's more cost effective at this point. So basically what I was trying to do is get a good idea of what the hoses were going to require so that I don't waste my time making brackets twice. I feel comfortable enough with this that I can go ahead and make the brackets. So I'm going to start with making a couple of pieces for the bottom and then I will go ahead and make a piece for the top to bolt down here. But before I drill a hole and bolt that permanently to the core support, I'm going to look at how much a factory Honda bracket would be and if that would be a better option than the one I would make. So I'm going to get to making those brackets now. All right, so here's a little bracket I made. Basically, what I'm going to do is this hole is big enough for the radiator part to fit in. Focus. I drilled two small holes here because what I'm going to do is like put a couple of tacks on either side and then fill those in as plug welds and just go ahead and weld this to the frame. Radiator sit down in there. I'll have foam tape across the top of it. That should set it up exactly where I need it. It might actually be a slightly higher than I had it sitting before, but I actually think I have the clearance, so this should be fine. So I'm going to make another one of these and then I'm going to weld them into the car. All right. So I've welded the two brackets in. Don't laugh at my welds. They're horrible, but they work. And with the weight this thing is going to support, they should be more than fine. I will keep an eye on that just over time, but Basically, now I can get the radiator semi-permanent in place. So real quick, I just shut the hood again just to show you guys that it does close. And this car has awful fender gaps. That's probably because it's been wrecked or something. As a matter of fact, I know it was wrecked because it had a different color fender on this corner. But the hood closes over the radiator. That's the important thing. All right, so we got this radiator fit in the car. Just got to nail down how we're going to do that top mount and also getting the hoses figured out for sure. Uh, other things I've gotten done, I got the wiring, engine wiring in. Dash is not in yet. And I've made arrangements to get the compressor housing welded. So I just got to figure the exhaust side out. Once that's all figured out, we can get going on getting the final assembly done of the head and getting the head back on the engine. I should have the dash in by then. So once I get the head and everything on, we are ready to fire this thing up. And I will see you guys in the next video.